then you pair yourself automatically and stuff like that. Uh, as I say, the ultimate security in this case probably doesn't exist if you have usability in your other mind uh, because it increases that much the complexity, which ends to my last point, that people will screw it up. Um, and I go over a couple of slides now and the model gets a little bit more weird when you go with that. Okay. They kept the word pairing for some reason and called it simple pairing. Uh, at some point they realized, okay, simple pairing is from a marketing perspective bad. So they ended up, oh, we have to call it secure simple pairing. Never mind. Uh, the good thing is actually they went on their roots and said, okay, what do we have in the security business that actually works? So they went up elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman. Okay, that's nice. At least public key exchange instead of their homegrown stuff. They have a passive eavesdropping protection and an optional man in the middle protection. The eavesdropping protection is mandatory, you can't switch it off. The man in the middle is uh, optional because sometimes, because they want to have two models. It just works, so you put devices together without any user input and then you have a more, uh, more security than you currently have with a user input. But if you have user input, so the user uh, confirms a pin code, enters a pin code, or you have some external mechanism, then you can have an additional, additional man in the middle protection. Well, it's not a bad idea. Uh, the encryption is still on the chip, which is good, so nobody in the host stack business can actually screw up the uh, encryption algorithm and in, uh, make their bugs uh, and include bugs or weak implementations or whatever. Um, they ended up something like IO capabilities. I have a couple of slides for that that go that in detail, which means basically, okay, the device tells you if they have a keyboard for a pin code input, if they have a display to show pin code or stuff like that. They stuck with the security mode concept. I told them a year ago they should simply deprecate all security modes and have a nice chapter about how security should be done. No, they had a new one which is called security mode 4 now. But never mind. Okay, I.O. capabilities. Uh, the basic idea is a device tells the other device what they can do. If they have an input device, so keyboard or keypad or whatever, or if they have an output capability so it can display actually something. So a keyboard, for example, has an input capability. Uh, a mouse has no input and no output capability, but a computer basically has input and output capabilities and is a display like a picture frame has only a display capability and stuff like that. So they separate these and based on these informations, they pick a different algorithm. The first one is numeric comparison. So both sides display a number and you compare this number and say, yes, they match. Uh, you have a passkey input like before. So one side asks you for a passkey and then you can input it. It has a slight variation. So there are two ways. Both sides have to enter the same pin code or one side displays a pin code and you have to type it on the other side, which is kind of nice. For example, if you want to put your keyboard to your computer, so the computer displays a pin code and then you only have to type it on your computer and then you are paired, which is kind of nice. Uh, the third one is out of band, so like near field communication, you put two devices close enough together and then you can basically be paired. And it's, it's meant for NFC communication, but it can be reused for something different. The thing that they didn't do is cable-based authentication. Uh, if you heard about wireless USB, wireless USB basically works. You have to put in the device via cable first and then you can use it wireless. Of course, Bluetooth is a complete wireless technology from the beginning, so the cable-based authentication got removed from the spec because of marketing reasons, because otherwise it's a cable technology again. Uh, never mind, but with the out-of-band mechanisms, you can actually implement a cable-based authentication on top of it, so it's kind of tricky. Uh, hello? Next? Not again, come on. Okay. So, the specification is kind of clear how you map the IO capabilities. So basically, they have this nice chart where you end up, okay, oops, uh, don't kill myself. Uh, where you have the no input, you can have a yes, no, or you have a keyboard. So they separate between the uh, input capability if you have two buttons or if you have a full keyboard, which means if you have a full keyboard, you can enter actually a, a pin. When you only have a yes, no button, you can only confirm that uh, the pin code is correct or not correct. Uh, for the uh, output part, you basically have no output, so you have no display like a keyboard or you can display actually a numeric number that somebody has to type. Um, and in the end they ended up, okay, the numeric number is uh, only four digits since that's enough entropy to actually create 
uh, most uh, secure enough link key for the authentication and encryption. Okay, any questions for that so far? It's kind of a lot of information up front. And now there's a lot of more is coming. And this is how the new security architecture looks like. Yeah, you who. Uh, they made it a little bit more complex, but in the end it boils down uh, what, which way you actually gonna do. So Bluetooth inband describes basically that you do the uh, uh, pairing with uh, a numeric comparison or passkey input, while the out of band actually uh, has multiple ways to actually do it while you discover the information, while you have the information up front and so on and so forth, which makes the model kind of complex. Let me put it this way, I don't expect to see really out of band devices in the really near future. They have to solve first the in-band stuff to get that right before they're gonna actually do the out of band stuff and think about it. <laughs> I have this slide in the presentation, you can basically grab it from the specification but once you see the specification you get kind of scared. This is basically what it boils down and then you have the different ways, numeric comparison, pass key entry, all the just works models if you don't have any information and it is kind of stacked. So you can initially have a just works with a weak link key and after that you can update your link key with a pass key or numeric comparison to make it more secure. So the example for that one is basically you connect to other device and you have no idea what you're going to use on that device but you want to have it more secure so you want to have authentication and encryption. But you don't have any information if they have a display attached or if the service needs a man in the middle protection or whatsoever. So basically connect to it, you do it just works which will give you the Diffie-Hellman public key exchange and uh, the passive eavesdropping, eavesdropping protection. But then you want to use a service like I want to synchronize my phone book. So you want to be protected against man in the middle then you have to update your link key with a numeric comparison or pass key uh, authentication. Uh, works pretty well but it's kind of makes it more and more complex all over time. Any questions to this diagram? I answer them happily but otherwise I simply go to the next slide. Are you scared? <laughs> Confused? Okay. <laughs> um, as I said, initially the link key was basically everything and the combination key, I mentioned that, that's the basic link key, then they had the local unit key and remote unit key. Both are deprecated but they're still in the spec. And okay, we have this new security model and we have to differentiate the link key because we can't tell what link key it is. So they have the new types like a debug combination key, I'm gonna go on the debug combination key a little bit later. Unauthenticated combination key, that's basically what you get if you do just works. And authenticated combination key if you do pass key entry or numeric comparison. And a change combination key if you have used an authentication uh, combination key and changed it so you update it over time. And all of these link keys have, have different implications on when you have to drop them, when you can use them and what you can do with them. So basically the debug combination key should only stay in memory. The unauthenticated combination key needs to be updated once you need a higher security level. So means you can store it but you shouldn't store it since you can always regenerate them in time since it, ha it requires no user interaction. The authenticated combination key, however, yeah, that's a real one that you want to keep because otherwise you have to do the passkey entry or the numeric comparison again. And the change combination key is, yeah, what do we do if we don't actually know from what the change came? Okay, more confused? Yeah, I was initially, completely. Um, let me put it this way, they have another nice slide which actually tells you what you have to do and sometimes what you can do. It is not clear if your security requirement from your application is not enough what the stack actually is doing. And just for the fun of it, and I want to show my sliding windows, uh, this spec goes into something like generic access profile, security aspects, security modes, yada 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 yada. Let me just see if we find this one. And then you go into these kind of graphics on the right. And that's not the only one, there's another one. Uh, and they have a couple of more. And there are a couple of more, even with reds written in there and whatever. And more and more and more. Uh, if you want to ruin your weekend, just have a look at them and try to understand them. 
they are really complex and mainly they are so complex because they have to take care of the other devices, not a 2.1 device and can't do uh, any kind of advanced simple pairing. So you basically have a lot of things to take care of and do it right and make the right decisions. Um, the specification is basically designed as a complete state machine but they, don't, they have a state machine that needs at least something like four pages on a Dean A4 to describe it. So how can the programmers actually get it right in the first step? Uh, anyway, um, depending on the link type you have to do different decisions if you have to update your security or if you uh, get a connection request from an unauthenticated device etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, some interesting things is automatically initiate pairing, uh, uh, automatically update your pairing, notify the user uh, or pick whatever you want to do and stuff like that. None of them actually speaks about when you have to disconnect the device because the security requirement is not enough. Which is kind of, I, I think it's a weak spot in the specification at the moment. So my phrase is, there's nothing simple when it comes to secure simple pairing. The word simple isn't there. It's the word simple it makes no sense. It's marketing crap. The word secure is marketing crap because simple was sounded not secure enough. So we have a lot of stuff they, they built around the word pairing for no obvious reasons. Okay. The only good thing is uh, it is more secure than the current model even with only just works. It is harder to get into the connection. It's harder to spoof the connection. Uh, so, and the main reason since they always enable uh, QoT meaning authentication and encryption, it is definitely a way in the right direction. The only problem is if you want to have the real security, it's getting a little bit more complex. Uh, and I just sat down a couple of uh, minutes ago and actually draw this small graphics. So basically the legacy pairing looks like this. We have this big junk of cryptographic information, authentication technologies, key handling and so on. That's just a Bluetooth chip. You have a little bit in the host stack, you see they have to open the dialog, store the link key, etc. And we have an application that actually have to decide if they want to do security or not. Okay, that's pretty simple. Uh, once you go into simple pairing, you put a little more technology in the chip. Okay, the chip manufacturers are not too bad. They most times they know what they're doing. And then you basically double the information you have to deal in the host stack with and you even increase the information in the application because the application has to know, okay, what's the current security situation? Do I have to update it? Uh, what information I have to tell them? Do I want to have a man in the middle protection? Do I want these? Do I want that? So they double ev in every place instead of making it really simple in one place but they put the pressure on this. And the biggest problem is the host stack to get it actually right since that's separating the applications uh, from uh, the Bluetooth chip and making having the uh, my, uh, major attack vectors. Okay, you just saw basically how the uh, legacy pairing works. This is a secure simple pairing uh, with user confirmation where the basic user gets a pin code on both sides and have to say yes or no. Um, let me put you through this. Basically exchange the IO capabilities, yada, 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 yada. And then they have their confirmation request, then they have your passcode and then the, uh, the uh, host stack has to display this passcode somewhere and then they have to wait uh, for the confirmation for it and this has to happen on both sides and in the end you finally get your link key which you got initially. In this case you have the authenticated combination key which is the most secure link key you can get. Uh, and let me put it this way. This is the simplest version of simple pairing in its implementation way. If you go in that you have a just works model where you have to reject the previous link key because it's not secure enough and then you have to do this again and so on and so forth and not even speaking about the IO capabilities since sometimes you have a keyboard attached then you could an input a pin, sometimes you don't. You have to check the IO capabilities have to match your security requirements and so on and so forth. Okay. Any got any scoops when I said it has a debug mode? Uh, yeah, me too. So uh, the problem with the secure simple pairing is it's too good. From a cryptographic standpoint it's too good and it's too good for the protocol analyzers and the companies that make money with their protocol analyzers to sniff connections between devices have a big problem. They can't anymore. So I said, yeah, whatever, who cares. 
the Bluetooth stick decided, okay, we have to play nice with them. So they ended up, okay, we have a debug mode. A debug 